For so many of us, when we start trading, we typically start with a small account. We start with a small amount of money. And when you start with a small amount of money, you face some real challenges. A small account has some hurdles that it has to navigate that a larger account doesn't. So when it comes to trading, size really matters. I know you had the one ex-girlfriend that lied to you and said size doesn't matter. Well, guess what? She was just being nice to you. Size definitely matters. It definitely matters when we're talking about your trading account size. So trading with a small account. Today we're talking about trading with an account size of $10,000 to $25,000. And why did I pick these numbers? Why 10K on the low end? Well, in my opinion, I think it's extremely challenging to trade with accounts smaller than $10,000. It's just too challenging if you're trading, for example, with only $3,000 or only $5,000. You're just way too limited on the underlyings that you'll be able to trade. You're way too limited on the strategies that you'll be able to use. So in my opinion, in order to start actively trading in a responsible way, start with at least $10,000 if at all possible. Even though you can trade with less than that, I mean, you can trade with any amount of money that you want to start with. It only takes about $2,000 to open a standard Reg T more Margin account. I think most brokers, they want you to deposit $2,000 to open a standard margin account. And you know you definitely want a margin account, so you definitely want to start with at least $2,000 because margin allows you more buying power. It allows you to put on more positions. What sets a margin account apart from a cash account is the ability to borrow money and borrow against marginal positions, such as long stock positions, which you can be used basically as collateral to establish and maintain other positions. And let me show you what I mean about margin on these long stock positions if I go to my trading account which of course is tasty trade let's imagine that I want to buy 100 shares of spy spy is currently trading at five hundred and fifty four dollars and if I buy 100 shares it is going to cost me fifty five thousand four hundred dollars if I had a cash account but I have a standard reg T margin account meaning I only have to put up half that amount. My buying power reduction for buying 100 shares of SPY is only $27,700. If I had a cash account, on the other hand, I would have to put up the full $55,400 to buy 100 shares of SPY. So margin is very nice because again, it reduces your overall buying power usage, allowing you to put on more and more positions. Now I chose $25,000 for the upper end of this threshold because I think once you get past $25,000, you're no longer really a small account. At that point, you're no longer governed by that annoying pattern day trader rule that says you can't make more than three day trades in a five business day period or your account gets locked. Luckily, once you get past that $25,000 mark, you no longer have to worry about that. You can make all the day trades you want and nobody's going to lock your account. So let's talk about some of the negatives with small accounts. So the biggest negative is the limitation on the products you can trade because if you have a very small amount of money, you can't sell naked options on most underlyings because their share price is too big. And you can't sell a naked option because if you get assigned, you don't have enough money in your account to buy or sell the 100 shares on the assignment. So you really have to trade very low price stocks. Unfortunately, most low price stocks are garbage stocks that are typically not worth trading. They typically have low liquidity. They're also the type of stocks that are much more likely to go out of business than actually go up in value. So you really don't wanna be holding shares of those things anyway. But it's not just the naked options that are a problem with small accounts. Even spreads and iron condors might be too big on some underlyings if they don't have dollar wide strikes. For example, if a stock only has $10 wide strikes, that represents $1,000 on a credit spread or an iron condor. And I can show you this in action as well. SPY has dollar wide strikes, but let me go to something that has very wide uh, spreads as far as the options chain. So I'm going to go to O-R-L-Y, which is O'Reilly Automotive. It's not a very liquid stock as far as trading options. I never trade this thing. <laughs> I don't recommend you trading this thing because it's a very high price stock and it only has $10 wide strikes, meaning any spread or any iron condor that I want to trade in this thing is going to represent $1,000 
between the spread. For example, if I did a standard kind of credit spread here, for example, I sell the 1090 put and buy the 1080 put. Again, that's 10 points in between the spread. That's $1,000. In this case, I would receive a credit of 260. 260 minus $1,000 means my max loss on the trade is 740. And again, $740 for the max loss. Well, what if you're trading with only $5,000? Do you really want to risk $740 if you only have a $5,000 account? No, this is too dangerous. You need to find a product that's got tighter strikes as far as the options chain. Another problem with these small accounts is that because you have to put so much of your account at risk on each and every trade, it's really hard to diversify. It's, it's very difficult to diversify because you're only able to be in just a few positions because you have so small an account, you know, you can only be in maybe three, four, maybe five positions. Now, when you have a larger account, typically you don't want to put more than about two to 3% of your net lick account value at risk in any one trade, but you really can't do that when you trade with a small account. And we're talking about this $10,000 to $25,000 range, right? If you're trading with that size account, you're really going to have to probably risk 5% of your account on each and every trade, maybe 7%. Uh, once you get to 10%, I think that's a little too risky. I think you're, you're really risking blowing up your account if you get past 10%, but you're going to have to risk more per trade if you have a small account than somebody that has a a larger account. And the reason is if you only risked 2% of your account on each and every trade, that's just not a very large amount of money. Even if you win on all your trades, you're winning such a small amount of money that it's just going to take you forever to actually grow your account. You're, you're not going to see your account really get anywhere because you're trading such small sizes, plus those small trades that you're putting on, small as in you know what your risk and reward is, you know, fees are going to cut into that. A larger percentage of your profits are going to be eroded away by fees compared to somebody that's trading with a larger account. And finally, one of the biggest negatives of the small account is that pattern day trader rule, that annoying pattern day trader rule that nobody likes. It's such a huge limitation to your trading. So in my opinion, I think you need to get to 25K as quickly as possible. Do whatever you can to get your account size to that $25,000 number, because once you get there, then it really takes some of the shackles off of your trading. Now let's talk about the positives of trading with a small account, because I like to see the good and the bad in every situation. And I don't think it's all negative if you're trading with a small account. I think there are some positives, because if you're trading with a small account, you must take more risk on each and every trade. You learn to take more risk. And the reason you have to take more risk is we've already talked about it. The returns will be too small to grow your account in a sufficient time frame unless you actually take a, a pretty good amount of risk. And I think this is really important for anybody that actively trades. I think learning how to take risk and managing risk is the most important skill to becoming a long-term successful trader. In contrast, people that trade with a very large account size, they typically don't put much of their account at risk on any given trade. They typically place really low risk, low reward type trades. And this is because these low reward type trades, they're still a sizable amount of money if they win because they have so much money in their account, right? Their account size is so big, they only have to put you know, a fraction of it in use at a time where you really have to put most of your account at risk at all times. So small account traders really get used to taking risk and managing trades. They know how to roll options. They're, they're constantly rolling options up and down in strike price and out in time. And this is stuff that the large account has to do much less frequently. For example, the large account, they can sell a naked strangle, have it go against them and just let it go to expiration. They can let it go to expiration. Whatever happens, happens because they can take the loss because it was such a small trade for them anyway, where if you have a small account and you did a naked strangle, you know, that's a dangerous trade. You actually have to watch that thing. And if it goes against you, you have to fight it, right? You have to defend it. And I also think a benefit of starting small is that the vast majority of new traders, they typically lose money in the beginning. Most traders lose money when they start out. And overwhelmingly, most traders lose money in the beginning because it does take some time to actually learn how this all works. So starting with a non life changing amount of money, I think is also a plus. So let's talk about some other considerations. Let's say that you have a small account and let's imagine you have a $10,000 account. In this case, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to grow that small account 
with just trading profits. Because you're starting with such a small amount of money, it's going to take you several years probably to get to $25,000 to get you past that pattern day trader rule. And the reason is you're starting with such a small amount of money. So most traders, let's say you're a winning trader, which isn't guaranteed, but let's imagine that you trade and you actually are a winning trader. Let's imagine that you're a really great trader and that you average year after year 20% profit, which is outstanding. <laughs> You're a world-class trader at that point. Well, let's imagine that you start with $10,000. After your first year of trading, you gain 20%. Well, you took $10,000 and made it into $12,000. That's a nice gain, but it's still $12,000 is a small account. Now let's imagine your second year, you make another 20% gain. Okay, well, you took $12,000 and made it into $14,500. Still, a small account. You can see it would take you several years to get to 25K and beyond. So if you actually want to see your trading account size grow, you need to regularly deposit money into your small account to quickly get your account size to a much more manageable amount. And once again, the quicker you get your account past that 25K mark, the better. So there you have it. That is trading with a smaller account. So we're talking about small accounts from $10,000 to $25,000. And that was just arbitrary levels that I picked that I thought made sense. Now, if you want to learn more about options trading and especially my favorite option strategy, which is the wheel strategy, check out my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy, available on Amazon. You'll find a link in the description below. Also, if you want to support my work, I recently launched a new Discord server. It's the DT Options Discord server, and please consider signing up for that. You'll find a link to it in the description below as well. Peace, guys.